Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part seven of our CME CNC Rostock Max V3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along, I highly suggest you pause the video here and go back and watch the earlier ones in the series just so that you're caught up with where we're at in the manual and in the build process. If you're not familiar with CME CNC's line of deltas, there's a link in the description down below. I strongly suggest going and checking them out. They've got everything from little tiny guys all the way up to the huge Artemis. So with that, let's do it. Okay, so as I said at the end of part six, it's time that we actually jump outside the manual just a little bit to a sub-manual for our carriage assemblies. Now CME CNC calls these the cheapskate, and I provided the link to the sub-manual down in the description below. But to get started, the parts that we're going to need are the carriage, all the parts from the carriage bags, the bearings, the bearing covers, the hinges. Um, the screws, you'll need three of these little dog bones as I call them from the arms kit as well as the carriage cover pieces. From a tools perspective, you'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver and I'm going to cheat some since we have so many of these to do and possibly use the impact driver. Again, as I have in the, on the other videos, I caution if you're going to use the impact driver, just use that to get your screw down part way and finish it off by hand. That way you don't crack the plastic by going too tight. So with that said, let's get started putting these guys together. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is you should have 24 of these bearing covers that look like this and 12 of these bearings. It's going to be three per skate. All we're going to do is snap one on either side of the bearing like that, basically to make a wheel. We're going to set aside and we're going to rinse and repeat this about a dozen times. Okay, that does it. We've got 12 of them. Now, as you notice by the pile here, we actually have some spare rings. Uh, that would be in case any of these were damaged in the injection molding or they wear out prematurely. Um, you have options to replace those easy enough. So now that we've got those done, let's go ahead and assemble the spring arms. That's going to use these injection molded pieces here, like so. All we're going to do is take the one that has the two prongs on it like this. I'm going to slide a bearing over each then we're going to take the receiver side, like so, and push that down, hopefully. Onto it, like so. You don't want to break these by forcing them too hard, but sometimes they need a little bit of effort. Let's try one of the other ones and see if it wants to go on any easier. See, I'm going to use the handles of a pair of pliers, not the pliers themselves, to try to use as a grip to squeeze that a little better. Oh, that doesn't want to go. All right, so let's come back to this one. We'll set it aside. We'll try one of the other ones. My guess is that we just have a little bit of flashing there. 
the injection molded process that we might need to clean off. And see if we can get those started into the holes. Okay, that one has one side that doesn't want to fit either. So I'm going to try something slightly different with this one. Let's see here. I'm going to use a pair of flush cuts and I'm just going to trim the very tip of this like so just to get any flashing off of there. I'm going to take this side. I'm going to take the tip of my knife. And we're going to try this one again. There we go. That one's fit together. Very good. Okay. So that one worked. So we're going to go back over here to these two that would not go together. At least not entirely on that side. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my flesh cuts, try to trim off the flapping, flashing off these a little bit. Okay, we have our three skates done. Okay, now we're going to take. our shells. We're going to uh, grab one of each part and position them like so. We're going to slide two bearings onto this half like that. We're going to fit a skate, um, and I screwed that one up, so we're going to fit a skate in there like that. A little bit of flashing I'm going to trim off there so it rotates. We want it to pivot like that. And now we should be able to just snap this guy closed, like so. And now all we need to do is come back and screw it together. So let's set that aside. I'm going to do one more of these like this. We're going to That's two done. This one I'm going to have to take apart because I got it upside down. So I'm going to use my needle nose to try to make that happen. Okay, now we can put together our third and final skate. Okay, at this point, we can go through with these screws and we're going to put three of them in here. One, two, three on each side. And we want to make sure that we do not over tighten them, that there's a, uh, a slight gap between the two halves. Okay. And I know I said earlier that you needed a number two Phillips, but this is actually a number one. Again, you don't want to over tighten them and you're going to run your finger through, make sure the wheels all turn. Then we're going to rinse and repeat that with the other two skates. It's three screws a piece. Okay. We have our three skates done like so and ready for the next step. Okay, the 
Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install these ball joints, or as I call them, the dog bones. Those are just going to slip over like that. Those are what are going to attach the arms to the skates. Then we're going to use the screws, but with washers this time, to hold those on. Next thing for these is going to be to install the end scop screws, which are the, um, the flat heads. Those are going to thread into through the top here. And it's important not to tighten them too far as you're threading them into plastic. So you just want to go down slowly. And when they bottom out, you want to stop. And do the last one. Now, what will happen is as these ride the skates, this is what will hit your end stops to trigger them. Okay. And that is it. We will not be using the other pieces at this time. So we'll just set those aside and come back to those when needed later. That concludes this segment of our Rostock Max V3.2 build series. Special thanks again goes out to CME CNC for providing this kit for us to build and use for this build series. If you're not subscribed, please feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. Ring that bell if you want to be notified when the next video in this segment is done or any of the other videos I put out. And if you'd like to help the channel, there are affiliate links down below for both Matter Hackers and Amazon. If you're shopping at either of those, I would appreciate it if you would consider using the affiliate links as it helps me fund the channel to keep things going. And with that, I bid you aloha and we'll see you next time on Practical Printing.